Brian Dorsey is on death row for killing his family members, Sarah and Ben Bonnie, in 2006. Her whole life was Jade. Um, well, I mean, her husband Ben, too, but... The U.S. Supreme Court today paved the way for the state to go forward with Dorsey's death. It's always Ben and Jade, Ben and Jade. So I don't know right now she would want us to just focus on Jade. General Andrew Bailey says if the court approves his request, Dorsey's execution would take place within 90 to 120 days. Countdown to execution. As the clock ticks relentlessly towards April 9, the atmosphere surrounding Brian Dorsey's impending execution grows increasingly tense. The specter of his fate looms large over a case shrouded in tragedy and controversy. Back in 2006, the picturesque tranquility of New Bloomfield, Missouri was shattered by the brutal slayings of Sarah and Ben Bonney, Dorsey's own cousin and her husband. The crime shocked the tight-knit community to its core. Dorsey's subsequent conviction for the double homicide cast a long shadow of sorrow and disbelief over the region. Since then, Dorsey's legal battle has been a roller coaster of appeals, motions, and setbacks. Despite fervent efforts by his defense team, including claims of inadequate representation and appeals based on Dorsey's mental state at the time of the crime, the courts have upheld his demise sentence time and again. The legal proceedings have been fraught with emotion and uncertainty, with each ruling bringing either a glimmer of hope or a crushing blow to Dorsey and his supporters. Amidst the legal wrangling, the public response has been a mix of condemnation, sympathy, and debate, while some advocate for justice to be served swiftly and decisively. Others question the fairness and humanity of the demise penalty. Community leaders and authorities weigh in on both sides of the argument, adding fuel to the fiery debate surrounding Dorsey's fate. Meanwhile, behind prison walls, Dorsey grapples with the grim reality of his impending execution. As the days dwindle down to mere hours, he faces the daunting task of preparing himself mentally and emotionally for what lies ahead. His state of mind oscillates between resignation and defiance as he grapples with the weight of his actions and the uncertain future that awaits him beyond the prison walls. In these final two months, Brian Dorsey stands as the precipice of his destiny, his fate hanging in the balance as the world watches with bated breath. Legal Battle In the legal battleground surrounding Brian Dorsey's fate, the plea for clemency emerges as his last ray of hope. Amidst the looming shadow of the executioner's axe, Dorsey's legal team launches a heartfelt appeal, presenting a compelling case for mercy. They argue that Dorsey's troubled past, marred by mental illness and substance misuse, clouds the clarity of his culpability. They emphasize his remorse and rehabilitation efforts behind bars, painting a portrait of a man transformed by the harsh realities of prison life. With an 80-page petition, they lay bare the flaws of Dorsey's trial, citing inadequate legal representation and failure to consider his mental state during the crime. From the trenches of the legal battlefield, Dorsey's attorneys offer their perspective on the uphill struggle they face. They reveal the intricate chess game played with the prosecution, navigating the labyrinth corridors of justice in pursuit of a slim chance at redemption. They speak of sleepless nights and tireless advocacy, driven by fervent belief in their client's humanity and the inherent injustice of his looming execution. However, the government's response is staunch and unyielding. State officials and legal authorities remain resolute in their commitment to uphold the rule of law. They cite the gravity of Dorsey's crimes and the need for justice to be served swiftly and decisively. Despite pleas for compassion, they stand firm in their duty to enforce the verdict handed down by the courts. Looking to the past for guidance, Dorsey supporters draw parallels with similar cases where clemency was granted. They highlight instances where mercy triumphed over retribution, pointing to examples of redemption and rehabilitation. Yet, they also confront the harsh reality that each case is unique with its own complexities and nuances. A Family's Dual Perspective Within the heart-wrenching saga of Brian Dorsey's case, two families grapple with the profound and enduring impacts of tragedy and loss. 
each bearing their own unique perspective on the harrowing events that unfolded. From the somber corridors of grief, the voices of Sarah and Ben Bonnie's relatives echo with sorrow and anguish. They share poignant reflections on the lives cut short by senseless violence, remembering cherished moments and lingering on the ache of absence. Their words paint a portrait of profound loss, tinged with the bittersweet hues of memory and remembrance. They speak of the void left behind, of birthdays and holidays marked by the shadow of absence, and of the enduring quest for justice and closure. In stark contrast, Brian Dorsey's family offers a glimpse into the turbulent currents of his past, tracing the contours of a life marked by hardship and adversity. They reveal the complexities of his upbringing, navigating the tumultuous waters of addiction and mental illness. The Attorney General's office is asking the state Supreme Court to set an execution for a Callaway County man. I have two actually families here since they've been married, been married a couple of months. They have, and yes. The U.S. Supreme Court today paved the way for the state to go forward with Dorsey's death. Her whole life was Jade. Um, well, I mean, her husband been too, but... Yet amidst the darkness, they illuminate moments of light and resilience, recalling the bonds of family forged in the crucible of adversity. They speak of a son, a brother, and a cousin, flawed yet beloved, grappling with his demons and seeking redemption in the face of overwhelming odds. As the years stretch into decades, the emotional impact of the case reverberates through both families, leaving indelible scars upon their hearts and souls. They wrestle with grief and anger, grappling with the weight of unanswered questions and unfulfilled dreams. Yet amidst the pain, glimmers of hope emerge as both families strive to find solace and understanding amidst the wreckage of tragedy. Despite the gaping chasm that separates them, both families harbor a flicker of hope for reconciliation and healing. They speak of tentative gestures and fleeting moments of connection, reaching across the divide in search of common ground. In these moments of shared humanity, they find fleeting glimpses of peace and understanding, forging bonds of empathy and compassion amidst the ruins of sorrow. The Defense's Argument At the heart of Brian Dorsey's defense lies a compelling narrative of mental illness and legal missteps, weaving together strands of psychological vulnerability and procedural inadequacies in a bid for clemency and justice. Central to the defense's argument is the assertion of Dorsey's compromised state of mind at the time of the crime, painting a portrait of a man ensnared by the throes of addiction and mental anguish. Evidence of Dorsey's long-standing battle with substance misuse and psychiatric instability is marshaled forth, with expert testimony attesting to the profound impact of his mental health struggles on his cognitive faculties and decision-making processes. Psychiatrists and medical professionals paint a vivid picture of a man besieged by auditory and visual hallucinations, his grip on reality slipping amidst the haze of drug-induced psychosis. However, the defense does not limit its scrutiny to Dorsey's psychological state alone. Rather, it casts a critical eye upon the actions and omissions of his legal representation, unearthing a litany of missteps and oversights that may have compromised his right to a fair trial. Brian Dorsey is on death row for killing his family members, Sarah and Ben Bonney, in 2006. It's always Ben and Jade, Ben and Jade. So I'll know right now she would want us to just focus on Jade. General Andrew Bailey says if the court approves his request, Dorsey's execution would take place within 90 to 120 days. Allegations of ineffective assistance of counsel echo through the hallowed halls of justice, with Dorsey's attorneys accused of failing to mount a robust defense, of neglecting to adequately investigate crucial aspects of the case, and of pressuring their client into a guilty plea without fully comprehending the ramifications. Courtroom challenges abound as Dorsey's defense team meticulously dissects the procedural intricacies of his trial, uncovering potential violations of due process and constitutional rights. 
From the failure to adequately explore Dorsey's mental health history, to the imposition of a flat fee structure that incentivizes a guilty plea, each misstep is laid bare before the scrutiny of the court, casting doubt upon the integrity of the legal proceedings that led to Dorsey's conviction. Prison Life in the confines of the correctional facility, Brian Dorsey has carved out a reputation as a model inmate, embodying dignity, respect, and redemption amidst the stark backdrop of incarceration. Dorsey's prison behavior is characterized by a demeanor of quiet resolve and steadfast determination to atone for his past transgressions. Far from being a disruptive presence, he navigates the daily rhythms of prison life with grace and humility, earning the respect of both fellow inmates and correctional staff alike. His conduct is marked by adherence to rules and regulations, exemplifying a commitment to personal accountability and rehabilitation. At the heart of Dorsey's daily routine lies his role as a prison barber, a position of trust and responsibility that he approaches with unwavering dedication and professionalism. Through the simple act of wielding scissors and clippers, he fosters connections and camaraderie within the prison community, offering inmates and officers alike a brief respite from the rigors of confinement. His interactions are imbued with empathy and compassion, transcending the confines of his cell to forge genuine bonds of friendship and understanding. The supportive testimonies of prison staff and fellow inmates serve as a testament to Dorsey's character and integrity. From correctional officers to fellow prisoners, voices unite in praise of his unwavering commitment to personal growth and rehabilitation. His presence is a source of inspiration and hope, a reminder that redemption is attainable even in the darkest of circumstances. Reflecting on his journey of rehabilitation, Dorsey's story serves as a poignant reminder of the transformative power of human resilience and the capacity for redemption. Through introspection and self-reflection, he has undergone a profound metamorphosis, emerging from the crucible of incarceration with a renewed sense of purpose and determination. His journey serves as a beacon of hope for those who dare to believe in the possibility of second chances and the inherent dignity of every human being. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.